So I wanted to introduce Rachel Marquez from uh, the Enterprise GIS team here in LA County. Rachel's going to talk on our next generation 911 and GIS work. And with that, I will turn it over to Rachel. All right. So I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so have you ever had to call 911 for an emergency? You know, most of us really haven't. Um, but many of us know the script from TV, right? It goes, 911, what's your emergency? Uh, but a lot of dispatchers these days are flipping the script. They're really saying, 911, where is your emergency? It is the most critical time. And why are they doing this? The current 911 systems is decades old and is analog, based on locations of landline telephones. These 911 systems use tables to represent road networks and associated address ranges within those tables. The system was not built to support the transient locations of mobile technology, such as mobile phones or even multimedia technology, like text, photos, video, or even sensors, like the one on your phone, or like the one on your watch. <laughs> You know, these systems are lacking to provide the services over wireless networks and even the internet. The last 20 years of technology, these smartphones, these mobile devices, social media has really changed the public's expectation of what a 911 system should be. As over 82% of all 911 calls now in California are based on mobile phones and 5% are actually based on voice over IP. This means that they have very little knowledge of where you're actually going or where you're actually calling from. So I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Rachel Marquez. I'm a member of the county um, EGIS team, as well as the coordinator for the countywide address management system. I also function as the co-chair for the California Next Gen 911 GIS task force um, hosted by Cal OES as well as I'm a chair for URISA's Next Gen 911 working group um, to really help bridge the gap of understanding between GIS professionals and the public safety community. So that's where I'm coming from. <laughs> so collectively, we're moving forward together towards a digitally enabled, spatially located next generation 911 system. So this next gen system uses geographic information systems to share and collaborate and extend the accuracy, completeness, currentness, stream that, sorry, <laughs> and create seamless locally sourced spatial data sets that we could all use and function. So I'd like to point out first as a distinction for us GIS professionals, uh, because a lot of times our schooling does us a bit of a disservice when we're talking about next gen 911 and we use the term call routing. This is when somebody actually picks up their phone and that call gets sent to the appropriate answering agency, not on the back end of how those uh, responding agencies actually get to the call. So this is before that. I just wanna go ahead and point that out so that we know what we're talking about together. Um, and in California, the next gen 911 solutions are 100% based on this call routing um, functionality. So California is on target for deploying next gen 911 services with testing occurring actually in the next few months. Uh, we're coordinating between the on-premise infrastructure um, installations that are required for next gen 911, new computers, new servers, new backends. Um, with the GIS data sets that are required for this implementation. Specifically, take a look at LA County here. We're our own, um, we're our own standalone network and have our own deployment timeline. The concept is to have the entire state fully deployed by July 2021, which is kind of remarkable in a state project. So, California is going with the National Emergency Number Association, which sets the next gen 911 GIS data standards for the entire nation. An example of the complete NG911 um, data set is you're able to visualize on the right. 
I wanna highlight the required data layers for the California project specifically, which are the road segments, which might, or sorry, which must include accurate and complete street names, address ranges, and jurisdictional boundary denotations within the attribute fields. These road segments are used for call, routing the calls as well as geo, geocoding the addresses. Site structure address points are also required and represent the physical, uh, sorry, the physical location of the home, apartment, or business. They must include accurate and complete number, address numbers, street names, as well as the jurisdictional boundaries as well. And this is due to several road naming um, conventions overlapping based on the cities. Um, in LA County, that happens a lot. There's a lot of main streets in various cities of LA County. So just to go ahead and break those up. These data sets are critical due to the next gen 911 incorporating and potentially, sorry, these data sets are critical due to next gen 911 incorporating the Latin longitude of calls, which will, deter, which will determine the proper uh, responding agency on who to contact for that call. Jurisdictional boundaries are also important as 911 calls, uh, you know, are being able to be responded by certain jurisdictions. Other boundaries that are required, which I don't, don't believe I have highlighted here, um, are service boundaries, such as responding aid areas for law enforcement, fire, uh, medical, and even some auxiliary ones, such as um, animal care, animal control, uh, those types of services. Locally contributed data is critical to ensuring the accuracy, currentness, and completeness. And working with your neighbors is essential to create the streamlined data set for the entire state. So this slide I actually just hoisted um, at a 10 o'clock meeting <laughs> that Cal OES just hosted. Um, just wanna throw that out there. Um, so they just proposed this workflow for California's next gen 911 GIS data um, to the state 911 advisory board. Um, it depicts the workflow for GIS inter data integration of the local and regional data sets. The local data is not necessarily going to be used in routing 911 calls, but it's going to be used to inform the data sets that are used for um, this data validation and uh, setup. Sorry. <laughs> so you can see this is where the local GIS data goes. It goes into the integration of Cal OES Acti Oops, back up. <laughs> into the validation for um, next gen 911 that's going to be performed by Cal OES or a consultant for Cal OES. And then it's going to be used for data sharing and validation through the other um, interested parties and required parties, such as the public safety answering points and the county coordinators who actually receive those letters from each and every city jurisdiction about an address assignment. So they get an input to ensure that it's timely, it's on where the location is supposed to be. And then if there's any red flags or any additions that the cities or county did not notice, it's gonna go ahead and funnel back to the local agency. Oops. All right, so what are the primary steps to prepare for next gen 911? Uh, standardize. There was a question about uh, previously about the standardization. That NINA, um, the National Emergency Number Association, does provide you a guidance. It provides very detailed explanations of both the road segment attributes as well as the address points attributes, including locational accuracy, um, positional accuracy, those types of things. You know, take a look at your base data set of what you have currently, how you're using your address data to function, um, and then compare the two, do the assessment um, assess where there is lacking of information or certain attributes that you don't currently fill out that you're going to need to fill out or fill out in some sort of different method today. Then do a quality assessment. So we heard from one spatial uh, about an hour ago now, I guess, <laughs> on how you could go ahead and do these quality validations and these assessments. Um, the next step, of course, is collaborate, not only externally with your neighboring jurisdictions, but also internally, understand the workflow of address assignment and how when a member of the public goes to you 
or goes to your city to go and identify, okay, somebody wants to build, you know, five new buildings on this property, you know, what's the exact workflow and when does that address get assigned to those buildings? Um, work on those types of collaborations and also expand your knowledge and horizon um, about addressing, about um, these collaborative opportunities and then publish it out. You wanna make sure that you get as many eyes on your data as possible so you can identify any gaps or laps uh, of the information so you have everything that you need. And then of course, next is maintain the workflow. You always wanna ensure that you're constantly working to improve not only the data, but your relationships and your process behind getting data into a regional repository and then up into the state repository. And hopefully with, some, with uh, Isaac's help moving forward, we'll actually get it into a national repository that could help um, in case California sinks into the ocean. <laughs> so I hope that wasn't too fast. <laughs> <laughs> it probably was, but any questions for me? Okay, well, you were a little bit fast. So I was going to give you a warning in a, a little bit, but um, Sorry. <laughs> no problem. So there is a question. Um, are there any current virtual volunteer or internship on opportunities to get experience with NG911? I know that um, everybody needs help. <laughs> And I'm more than willing to host anybody that wants to learn more about it and explore. Um, the, actually, the only reason why I got into this was uh, my own personal interest <laughs> and shadowing some working groups with both Nina and uh, the URSA organization. Um, so those would be great avenues to, to check out. And then if you want to help me in any way possible, I am more than willing to take on people. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know we can't do anything official, but, you know, I'm willing to go ahead and take on um, some assistance. And if you want some side projects for a class or for anything else, I got projects, <laughs> projects for days. So. And I think along that same line, uh, because this is, as we've heard, a regional project um, with all of our jurisdictions. There's 88 cities that um, Rachel maybe can also help connect people with some of the cities who may need help. I, I know some are very, uh, you know, don't have big GIS operations or maybe could use some assistance. So I think connecting to the network is certainly a good one. Um, and Daniel uh, asked a, a related question. How did you get involved with so many organizations and initiatives? So you mentioned the state and the risk work group and, and CAMS and so on, so. Um, I stuck my nose where it didn't belong. Uh, <laughs> I kind of have that habit. Um, I was always that person that would sit in the back of the room and listen in on these larger meetings and these lar large opportunities and not really say much, but then, you know, sort of poke at the bear, um, as it were. And so I ended up at a URSA conference. Goodness, it was four or five years ago now um, where I met um, Budge Courier, who's the Cal OES Next Gen 9, or he's the Cal, he works for Cal OES. He's the emergency communications branch manager. And he was talking about his conceptualization for the statewide project. Um, and of course, you know, I just hit him up afterwards um, at the social hour, started talking to him. And then he got my contact and sort of loops me into that process to help him sort of guide the entire vision of it. Uh, and then with Eurissa, I mean, Eurissa is always a great place to start. They put out fact sheets, um, other things like that. They have a task force working groups. And I know including um, the California GIS Council as well is also a great um, avenue, which we're gonna kick off the next gen 911 working group on that um, as a way to help local governments really build their understanding and knowledge behind the data structures and the requirements and what that actually means on a city to county level where Cal OES is just centrally focused on county to state. So we're gonna be kicking that off pretty soon. There's a Slack group that uh, Isaac started for emergency GIS. Uh, we have a channel on there that's working together also to try to build some more collaboration and just spread the word. Okay, we, all, we have a couple other questions that have come up. Um, so 
right now, I don't know if you know the answer, which part of LA uses GIS for 911 at present? Well, for call routing, none. They all use it as a part of their um, dispatching systems. Uh, so I know most, they call it the computer aided dispatch systems, CAD, um, use it for dispatch and um, you know, the after call routing, but none of them are currently using it for call routing specifically, which means if somebody calls via a cell phone, it sort of is based on triangulation, maybe somebody gets it picked up and it's pre-wired to go to one place or another, and then it's gonna have to be transferred. So, and that's, that's I think that. that's really driving the, re, the need for the, the GIS based routing is that we don't have a system that's built on modern technology and we're moving there. Um, I'm going to add in a question really quick and then I'll take the other one in the chat window, which is what's the time frame, both um, from a national standard around NG911? When are we trying to get to this and, and where's LA County in the process? We're trying to get there as fast as possible. Um, really, there's no reason why people are dying today because of this. Um, the solutions there, the technologies there, it's just the policy and implementation behind it. That's the real challenge. And then, um, you know, as we all know, everybody stays in their little bubble. So GIS people talk to GIS people, you know, public safety people talk to public safety people. Um, and it's really getting over that hurdle of bridging the gap. Um, which is where I come in doing these sorts of events, talking to, um, talking at public safety events as well um, to get over that hurdle and really bring everybody together so we could spread the word and push legislation that's required, um, get more funding available to make these projects available to everybody. Um, yeah. Um, and then uh, a question that sort of relates to that. Um, how many PSAPs are there in LA County and uh, that are Ooh. trying to be, you're trying to coordinate? A trick that's a put you on the spot <laughs> yeah okay a lot so they're, so they're registered by the fcc and i want to say the last time i checked there are 129 but that is both primary peace apps so usually law enforcement as well as secondary peace apps which are primarily you know fire departments and um those auxiliary agencies so i want to say like 129 so again, lots of coordination um, of getting the right call from the right person and place mapped to the right PSAP so the right responder can show up on time. Um, we have one other question in the Q&A window. Um, do you have any advice on how to get involved with ERISA's Next Gen 911 task force? Yeah, email me. <laughs> I could get you on there. Uh, the ERISA Next Gen 911 task force is actually hosting a webinar tomorrow which is poorly timed, but um, had to occur because of the timeliness. Uh, Nina is actually switching some of the data schema requirements um, for this next gen 911 related specifically to sub addressing. So apartment numbers, suite, floor numbers, you know, as you get into high rise buildings and IP phones, even cubicle numbers, those types of things. So they're proposing changes. So we had to go and rush together to put together a webinar discussion about these potential changes. Uh, and I could go ahead and um, give you more information about that afterwards. You could come chat with me later or email me or, um, yep, Nick go, went ahead and put up the link to the task for or the working group for your essay on the chat. So thanks, Nick. Very good. Um, and I think, you know, I would echo that, you know, get, you know, as Rachel said, uh, get involved. Um, a lot of times it's not waiting to be asked. It's just saying, hey, how can I help? And then suddenly you're chairing the statewide or co-chairing the statewide committee. Uh, be careful what you wish for. Uh, yeah. But uh, we do have another question uh, from Greg Mattis. Um, how does the county deal with people self-assigning addresses? Are there any ordinances? I don't specifically know about any ordinances, but this is um, one of the challenges that we have to deal with in addressing in general. It's that Certain residents are gonna call certain streets, certain things at certain times. Um, and you can't really get over that. You just have to understand the, the realm of where they're coming from and what the uses of the data are. So if Grandma Smith is calling 911 five times a week and is always referring to her house as, you know, Giovanni Lane, and it changed 15 years ago to Smith Lane, you know, 
the 911 people are going to need to go ahead and know that that is what it, that street might be called at some time. And so there's a way to do that in the database using alias names and associated things like that. Um, but it's, you know, that real divide of authoritative addresses and commonplace addressing or, you know, commonplace designations of, you know, locations. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, we have a couple minutes left and I don't see a question right now. Are you feeling brave enough to pop open the CAMS website page just to show people where they can learn more? Um, sure, let me go ahead and stop sharing. Yeah. And then I will pull that up. So, and as she's doing that, um, you know, I'll just say, uh, there's obviously um, a website around this. Rachel can show you. Um, there's more info also in the exhibit hall. If you visit the EGIS um, page, I believe is where the CAMS info is there. Um, and I'll take this chance to just remind you all, um, there is a lot, anytime you can go to the virtual exhibit hall and check out um, more from our some of our presenters and all of our other sponsors. So I encourage you to do that. Did I fill the right amount of time? You know, let me add one more thing too. If you do go to the exhibit hall, the County of Los Angeles Public Works Department has an addressing unit and their addressing unit, they talk about uh, gets to their ordinance and kind of their street naming committee. So you might wanna check that out. Go under public works, uh, go to the GIS and mapping, and then you can go to their addressing unit. Perfect, thanks Dave. All right, and then Rachel, a quick, you got like three minutes, so if you guys All want right. to do a quick share. Am I sharing here. the right screen? Yes, we see the web page. <laughs> All right, so yeah, this is the CAMS website. I have the Next Generation 911 tab up here um, that gets into the details of what it actually is, um, how it's related, and then even goes into a little bit of the funding that's available for LA County local governments. Um, to help with this process and get their data up to speed and doing the quality checks and all those types of things. Um, and then goes into the task force and the engagement that Cal OES has had from other county jurisdictions within the state. Um, and then even some of the standards that are available. If you want to be on my ma mailing list, go to the subscribes, subscribe button as well. Uh, we do a lot of educational sessions, a lot of open meetings, so, yeah. Okay, great. Um, and then I'm gonna stick in uh, a couple, uh, or one last question uh, in the chat that or Q and A that popped up uh, before we wrap up, which is, do you have any sense of what recruiters might be looking for on a resume for NG911 or keywords people might wanna search on? Um. <laughs> Let me, I don't think I have a great answer for that right okay. now. Um, just about data integration, exploring the collaborative data abilities and um, the, the keywords that both uh, the one spatial team and the data mark team uh, both mentioned about um, ETL processes, translations, collaboration, um, all those pie in the sky GIS type terms is, <laughs> basically where you want to go. Yeah. All right. So, and again, all these presentations, slides, and recordings will be made available uh, sometime after the event.